Chapter 4. Jake. I feel bad even going to this party, I said. Darlene should have invited Marco. He wouldn't have done the baby Ruth thing again. He's much more mature now. Sort of. I feel a little guilty too, Cassie said. She lowered her voice in a whisper and put her mouth close to my ear. But I seem to remember you saying we should all take the weekend off and be normal. So I'm going to be normal. We were both in our swimsuits, sitting in those long pool chairs. You know, the ones you can adjust so you're lying down or sitting up. There were 40 or 50 kids around the pool. Darlene's family has money, I guess, because it's a very nice pool. There was a long table loaded up with chips and dip and cold cuts. And there were coolers full of ice soft drinks. There was decent rock music playing on the stereo. Some kids were dancing. It wasn't even noon yet, but the sun was already bright. It was going to be hot, that was for sure. I almost envied Rachel heading up to the mountains. It would probably be cooler up there. It feels weird to just sit around and relax, I said. As soon as the words were out of my mouth, I heard a blood-curdling scream. Yeah! Someone shrieked. Oh, oh, oh! Someone else cried. I sat straight up. Trouble. I could feel the familiar rush of adrenaline. I quickly looked around, checking for the ways to escape. The places where we could stand and fight. The places we might be able to hide for a quick morph. People were running. No, on closer look, only a couple of girls were running. They were the ones screaming. That's Darlene, Cassie said. She sent me a puzzled, worried look. Oh, 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 get it away from me, Darlene screamed. Oh, get it away! Darlene ran straight towards us. She ran like the hounds of hell were right behind her. Help me, she screamed. It's after me. What is it? I yelled to no one in particular. Mice! A girl named Tracy, Tracy yelled, Mice! Then I spotted them, two tiny harmless little mice. Two little mice chasing Darlene like a pair of lions trying to bring down a buffalo. Darlene dodged right. The mice went right after her. And then something very interesting happened. This guy named Hans yelled, Darlene, run this way. I'll stomp them. Darlene headed for Hans. Hans raised his foot up, ready to stomp the mice as they shot past. But suddenly, the mice turned a sharp left, shot around behind Hans, and tore off after Darlene again. Right then, I knew. The mice had heard Hans' plans. They had dodged away to safety. Real mice don't chase people, Cassie said, giving me a meaningful look. No, they don't, I agreed. Marco, Cassie whispered, and he must have dragged Axe into it too. I will kill him, I said, just as soon as we save him. I raced around the pool. I tore through a mess of overturned chairs and soda cans and paper plates. Cassie went the other way. Help me! Help me! Darlene screamed, running towards the patio door. Hey! Cassie yelled as loudly as she could. It's just a couple of mice. Nothing to be afraid of. One of the mice hesitated. Marco had recognized Cassie's voice. You know, if those mice want to live, they should go to Cassie, I said trying to sound like I was making a joke. Otherwise, someone might kill them. Then, under my breath, I added, someone like me. I heard that, Marco said to me in thought speak. I could hear his thought speak, but since I was not in morph, I could not reply. Probably a good thing. I might have used some words I shouldn't use. It was total pandemonium. Forty kids running around like idiots, half running away from the mice, half running after the mice, everyone making lots of noise. Come here, little mice, Cassie said loudly. We were trying to make Marco realize he had to head for Cassie. I knew he could hear us. Mice have excellent hearing. But Mar Marco either didn't get it or had decided he wasn't done chasing Darlene. Duh! Darlene was not done screaming either. She reached the patio door. She was still screaming as she disappeared inside her house. Marco was after her like a shot, with Axe right behind. Don't worry, I heard Marco say, and thought speak a few seconds later. We're down in the basement. We're demorphing. Just make sure no one comes down in the basement looking for mice. Oh, man, I muttered. I ran for the patio door. Thump! I slammed hard into Hans. Both of us went rolling. No less than eight other people slammed into us, one right after another. It was like some bad football game. 
all of us jumbled together, yelling and giggling and pushing and trying to untangle our legs and arms. As it turned out, that pileup saved my life. I sucked wind and tried to stand up, and the sky above us grew dark. It was so sudden and so complete that everyone just froze. I looked up. The sun was hidden behind a swirling cloud of dust. Just a flat tornado. A tornado in a clear sky. I felt a terrible sensation of dread from deep down inside. The dust swarm grew solid. Within seconds, it assumed a shape. A shape like nothing ever seen on planet Earth. And then, it struck. Chapter 5. Marco. Okay, okay, maybe it was a little immature to sneak into Darlene's party as a mouse. But you didn't hear what she said about me. Me and Axe morphed in a vacant lot a block away. Then we toddled on over to on our little mouse legs over to the party. Of course, first we had to get used to the mouse morph. See, when you morph, you don't just get the animal's body. You get its brain, too. And most animal brains are loaded with different instincts. Usually hunger. Also fear. The mouse had a lot of each. He was very obsessed about food. And he was one scared little animal. It's often that way when you morph a new species. As soon as Axe and I achieved total mousehood, those instincts kicked in big time. Run, 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 run! The mouse didn't like being out in the open in broad daylight. He was scared of predators. Seriously scared. Run, run, run! So we ran. It was like one minute you're a normal human thinking, Hmm, isn't it fascinating shrieking down like this, growing a tail, having big whiskers? And the next minute, that mouse brain kicks in and suddenly you are charged up with the energy of a thousand cups of coffee on top of a thousand bowls of Captain Crunch, and you are energized. I cannot control this creature, Axe wailed. It's insane. Just go with it, I said. It'll chill out eventually. Let me tell you, mice can move those little legs. It was like being strapped into the front bumper of an Indy 500 car. Zoom! We hauled butt zipping in wild terror over leaves of grass as big as trees, pieces of gravel the size of beach balls, and bugs the size of collies. That much I'm used to. I have more small animals before. But what was sick was that I really, really wanted to stop and eat some of those bugs. There was this one beetle, kind of bluish black, and the mouse brain was like, ah, cool, lunch. But it was more terrified than it was hungry. So we just kept running, like out-of-control lunatics and I missed out on the flavor of bug. Eventually, we were able to get some control. Axe, you okay, man? I called to him in thought speak. I am fine, but these mice have very powerful instincts. Yeah, scared little things, aren't they? Animals develop instincts for a good reason, Axe said darkly. If the mouse is cautious, it probably has good reasons. Well, if we see any cats, we'll just morph back, I said. Yes. If we live long enough. In any case, we toddled off to the party, two little mice looking for a good time. Mouse senses are excellent, fortunately. Hearing is great. The sense of smell is great. The eyes are decent, but it's hard to see much when you're only an inch tall and your face is down at dirt level. Still, I was able to locate Darlene by the sound of her voice. She was talking to her friends about the usual stuff, school, music, some cute guy on TV... Axe and I hid underneath Darlene's chair, so I was able to hear everything pretty well. All I could see of Darlene was this enormous chair roof over my head. Stretched bands of interwoven plastic bulging down like they might burst and crush me. Quite a distance away, I could see her legs, looking like two gigantic pink pillars. Well, this is boring, I said to Axe. What did you expect? I expected them to be talking about me, naturally, I said. Then it occurred to me, I could thought speak to Darlene. I would just say the word Marco in her head. She wouldn't know where it had come from. She'd probably think someone had said it aloud. With thought speak, you can either do it so everyone hears you or sort of aim it at just one person. Marco, I said. What? Darlene asked. What about Marco? Nothing about Marco, this girl named Kara said. Good, because I don't even want his name mentioned at my party. He's such a jerk. I mean, after what he did? Throwing baby Ruth bars in my pool? Panicking everybody? He's so immature, a girl named Ellen said. 
No, duh, Darlene said. He thinks he's so cool and so cute, but he's totally not. He always makes jokes about stuff that aren't even funny. Well, I could stand them saying I was immature. That's what girls always say. But saying I wasn't funny? I would show them funny. Oh, yes. I took off. I ran for the legs. Axe came after me, yelling, What are we doing? We're just going to see how good Darlene's sense of humor is, I said. I ran for that big pink leg. I saw the foot pressing heavily down on the grass. I shot past her heel, which was like a wall to me, and aimed for the toes. Let me just say this. Darlene thinks she's perfect in every way, but her toenails definitely needed trimming. I scampered right onto her foot. I zoomed across her foot and scabbled wildly across her ankle and back over her toes. Yeehaw! I crowed to Axe. That'll give her something else to complain about. Oh, oh, oh! Darlene screamed. Up flew the foot. I jumped off just in time. And then she was out of there, screaming and yammering like a total ninny. Naturally, I chased her. And naturally, Axe came with me. It was total, absolute fun. I'm sorry, I know it was wrong and all, but man, it was so cool. That is, until I heard Hans yelling about how he's going to stomp me. That would never do. I did not intend to be stomped by Hans' big, stinky foot. I heard Jake's big voice yelling. And I heard Cassie's sweeter but still annoyed voice. Oh man, it's Jake, I said to Axe, busted. I raced for cover, looking for a place to morph back to human. Big stomping feet were landing all around me. They were slow, but man, they were big. Everyone was totally overreacting. I mean, give me a break. I was two inches long. How scary could I possibly be? Then it occurred to me. The house. We could run inside, race down to the basement where no one would be, morph back real fast, and then... Well, and then there I would be, just me and an Andalite. Great. That wouldn't look too strange. Axe, stay with me. We need to demorph. Then you have to do your human morph real quick, okay? I had the feeling, Marco, that this was not a good idea. Nah, everything according to plan. Zoom. Over the threshold onto the patio. Zoom. Into the house itself. Zoom. Past the hysterical Darlene, who was on the couch with a pillow over her head. Zoom along the carpet till we hit linoleum. Suddenly, the scent of dark places. Mouse places. Yes, it was going to work. We ran across a step and leapt, falling, falling, plop, to land on the next step. And again, and again, and again, step after step, at a speed that felt like we were flying rockets. It was so cool, if you overlooked the fact that it was maybe slightly stupid. Don't worry, I called to Jake in thought speech. We're in the basement. We're going to demorph. Just make sure no one comes down to the basement looking for mice. We lost our pursuers. No one followed us down the steps. And even as I ran, I started to demorph. I was halfway back to human. A strange mix of mouse tail and huge ears and human legs. A scary looking creature. The way Mickey Mouse would look if he'd been invented by Stephen King. Axe looked even worse. Half mass, half mouse, half andalite. Just as I was thinking, hey, this will all be fine. The entire world just flew apart. Crunch. Sunlight streamed down. The entire roof had been ripped away. The entire roof. Wood and beams and concrete just shattered and ripped and fell in huge chunks. I couldn't even make sense of it. I ran. The entire world around me was just being shredded. Shredded like the universe was being run through a food processor. And then I saw it. It was gigantic, enormous, a creature that seemed to be made of nothing but teeth and blades and destruction. It was like 20 hork glued together and given dragon wings. It was ripping the house apart with unbelievable power. The noise was terrifying. The scream of ripping wood, the shattering crunch of concrete being torn up, just torn up like it was nothing. Pipes bending, wires sizzling and popping as they exploded into showers and sparks. Look out! I yelled to Axe with my now human voice. Beams were falling all around us. Splinters were flying through the air. I barely noticed that I had finished morphing. I was human again. Somehow Axe had kept his concentration with fully in his human morph. We were defenseless. Two kids without a weapon between us. Above our heads, where there had been a house just seconds before, the beast hovered in the sun. 
It looked down at us with a dozen weird eyes that seemed to be stuck here and there at random. It stared at us the way that I'd seen Tobias stare at his prey. It was going to destroy us. There was no question in my mind. And no question that it could. Oh man, I moaned. I don't like this. Then the eyes all flickered at once. The beast seemed uncertain. And to my utter relief and utter amazement, the thing began to disperse. It became dust again, just a cloud of dust that thinned and disappeared. I was shaking so badly I couldn't stand up, but I was alive. Chapter 6 Rachel I woke up. I was on my back, lying on a bed of pine needles and crispy dried leaves. I was staring up at trees. The sun shone through the branches. My first thought was, what am I doing here? I had no idea how I had gotten to these woods, or even what woods these were. What am I doing here? I started to say out loud, but the words were garbled, mangled. They were more of a screech than actual words. I felt a tingle of fear. What was going on? What was going on? Why was I here? Why couldn't I talk? I shouldn't be here. I should be... Where? Where should I be? I tried to concentrate. How had I come here? Where was I before? Where where did I belong? But nothing came. Nothing. I couldn't remember how I'd gotten there. I couldn't remember where I had been. Ever. Suddenly it hit me in a wave of dread that made my heart skip several beats. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know my own name. I tried to sit up, and that's when I saw... Ah! I screamed in a weird, high-pitched shriek. My legs, they were encased in a black leotard, and I could see that the upper half of each leg was shaped like a normal human leg, but the end, the bottom half, suddenly changed shape, and from the bottom of the leotard, huge talons appeared. I looked at my hand, five fingers, five human fingers, but they were sprouted with feathers. There were feathers sticking out of my flesh. I felt my face, skin, skin on my cheeks and my neck, but then my bristling feathered fingers felt my mouth. It was a beak, a hard, tearing beak. It was a nightmare. That was it. I was having a nightmare. I could wake up. I had to wake up. I had to get out of this dream. Ah! I screamed again, and the unhuman sound of my own voice frightened me still more. I had to control the panic. I had to. Had to, but my legs, my face, my hands. Don't panic, I ordered myself. You will not panic. You will not panic. This isn't real. And yet I could feel the pine needles beneath me and the warmth of the sun as it landed through the branches. It all felt real. Was this how I always was? Was I some sort of freak? Half bird, half human? No, I knew that was wrong, and I knew that people did not become birds. And yet here I was, with feathers and a beak, with no memory of who I was. I looked like some horrible creature who was halfway through changing from bird to human. Or the other way around. Was that it? Had I been in the process of changing from one to the other? And which one was I really? Who was I? What was I? Come on, I ordered myself, get a grip. Get a grip. But I could feel screams boiling up inside of me. I could scream and scream and scream. No, no, start that and you may never stop, I thought. Use your head, think. I strained to remember, but it was as if half my brain were wrapped in a dense fog. I couldn't see through it, no matter how I tried. You're a human, I told myself silently. You're human, not a bird. And if you could change this far, maybe you can change more. I closed my eyes. I wanted to concentrate, and I did not want to see my body. Terror, rat terror rattled through me, shaking my bones, turning my insides. I was human. I wanted to be fully human. Human again. Then, I began to feel changes. I opened my eyes. As I watched, the talons shriveled and split and became toes. It was revolting to watch. It made me sick. But then I realized something. 
As soon as I lost concentration, the changes stopped. That had to be it. I must have been changing, and something had broken my concentration. I could not stay the way I was. I was a nightmare. I had to get out. I felt a shadow over the sun. I thought it was a passing cloud. I couldn't let myself be distracted. I focused down again. Human. I wanted to be human. I felt the feathers melt into my skin. I felt my beak become soft lips. The sun was very dim now. Something was blocking it. I felt a chill. I looked up. Just above the trees, a cloud of dust swirled wildly, like some flattened tornado. It swirled and concentrated. A dust cloud, but not a dust cloud, really. As I lay there, I had a terrible feeling. A feeling that this swirling, thickening cloud was watching me, considering me, focusing on me. But I could not allow myself to be distracted. I was still not fully human, and I wanted to be human again. Maybe, maybe once I was human, I would remember who I was.